China's military strength has achieved leapfrog development in recent years. China's rapid military buildup has left the People's Liberation Army Navy poised to overtake the U.S. Navy in several measures of maritime might more quickly than sometimes assumed. If China continues to expand its fleet at the current pace and the United States does not revitalize its shipbuilding industry, China will grow increasingly likely to emerge victorious from interstate war, especially a prolonged great power war. China's Dalian shipyard and Jiangnan shipyard are growing stronger and stronger. From the transformation of the Liaoning to the construction of the Shandong and Fuken, China has fully mastered the design and construction technology of aircraft carriers. The advanced block construction model not only saves dock time, but also improves construction accuracy. Moreover, Chinese shipyards continue to make breakthroughs in technological innovation. For example, the electromagnetic catapult technology of the Fuken is on par with that of the United States. In the future, China's two major shipyards are expected to continue to grow in technology and scale, providing solid guarantees for the strength of the Chinese Navy. China boasts the world's largest navy, with more than 370 ships and submarines, including over 140 major surface combatants, the Pentagon said in its annual report on Beijing's military. This battle force is expected to grow to nearly 400 next year and 435 vessels by the end of the decade. In short, the future pattern of aircraft carrier shipyards will more clearly show the dominant position of Chinese and American shipyards. Chinese shipyards will contribute to the Chinese Navy's move to the deep blue with more efficient construction capabilities, more advanced technology and more stable development. Much of this growth will be in major surface combatants, the Pentagon said in its report. Much of the US fleet is aging, the cruisers with the largest VLS capacities among the surface vessels are being retired, and the newest warships are delayed, some for years. Newer Chinese ships, like the capable Renhai-class destroyers with 112 VLS cells, are coming off the line at speed. One benchmark of modern high-intensity naval war fighting capability is a Navy's capacity in terms of vertical launch system VLS missile cells. A warship's VLS cells can carry various missiles, from air defense interceptors to anti-ship missiles to land attack weaponry. Ships are often outfitted with a mix of weapons for increased mission versatility. One benchmark of modern high-intensity naval war fighting capability is a Navy's capacity in terms of vertical launch system VLS missile cells. An area in which the United States Navy has long held an overwhelming advantage. China, however, is moving at pace to close this lead and, in 2024, the People's Liberation Army Navy passed a milestone in now fielding more than 50% of the U.S. Navy's capacity in surface ship VLS cells. The modern naval VLS was developed in the late 1970s, and the U.S. Navy started to introduce the system as a principal capability from the mid-1980s. Other navies began limited installations in the 1990s and then increasingly so on their major units from the early 2000s. Advantages include a reduced maintenance burden compared to previous systems, the ability to keep all missiles in immediate readiness, and particularly as spearheaded by the U.S. Navy with the development of the MK-41 VLS the possibility of simultaneously accommodating different types of missile, thus providing a multi-role capability. As such, in addition to these systems predominantly having an anti-air warfare focus, anti-submarine warfare weapons and land attack cruise missiles have also been incorporated. As 2024 drew to a close, the U.S. Navy boasted some 85 VLS carrying surface ships across three classes. Two cruisers of the Zumwalt Class 1 of which is in a comprehensive refit. And a third under sea trials, the remaining nine cruisers of the Ticonderoga Class, and the 74 Arleigh Burke Class destroyers in four different variants or flights. In comparison, the PLA Navy had some 84 principal surface combatants with VLS. These included one class of cruisers with eight ships type 055 Renhai, six destroyer classes numbering a total of 36 hulls, and 40 type 054A frigates, albeit with a more limited system in the case of the frigates. The PLA Navy, nevertheless, can field almost 4,300 VLS cells on surface combatants compared to the U.S. Navy's 8,400. A 20-year comparison highlights the increase in the PLA Navy's capacity.
While it had less than 1.5% of U.S. Navy capacity in 2005, this grew to over 13% by 2015. As 2024 ended, this had reached more than 51%. In 2021 and 2022 alone, the PLA Navy brought more than 1,260 new VLS cells into service. The closing of the capacity gap, however, is also due to a dip in U.S. Navy numbers from a peak of just under 9,400 cells in 2020. The main reason for this has been a fall in the number of the aging Ticonderogas, which were, until now, the most heavily armed of the U.S. Navy's surface platforms in terms of cells, with 122 each. At the same time, new U.S. warship construction is neither keeping up with those reductions nor with Chinese major warship output. Currently, Arleigh Burks are being completed at a rate of 1.6 per year. By comparison, the Chinese Type 052D is somewhat smaller and less heavily armed 64 compared to 96 cells, but had an annual production rate of 3.1 until 2022. China also continues construction of other classes including the Type 055 cruiser at its peak at a rate of 2 per year. The only other principal new US surface combatant under construction is the Constellation class frigate. But this design is slated to house only 32 VLS cells per platform and is not scheduled to see service before 2029. The vessel that will most directly replace both the Ticonderogas and the Arleigh Burks. The new generation DDG-X is still in the design phase and is not anticipated to be underbuilt until the early 2030s. The gap between the capacity of the US Navy and that of the PLA Navy is set to continue to close for the foreseeable future. In fact, during the Zhuhai Air Show, the Chinese military industry has already demonstrated the general vertical launch system and formulated an export model for it. It is also China's first external launch platform. Exported Shipboard General Vertical Launch System The vertical launch system is compatible with vertical cold launch and vertical thermal launch, and supports mixed weapons. A single launcher can be equipped with a maximum of eight compartments, and the corresponding number and arrangement of compartments can be customized according to the requirements of the ship. Each compartment can be loaded with one cartridge box bomb, or it can be loaded in a cluster way. CCTV Military Channel made an official announcement, the Type 055 Duquan realized the integration of air defense and missile defense for the first time. This means that China's Type 055 destroyers can have a sea-based ballistic missile interception system at sea like the US Aegis ship. Obviously, China's military industry has achieved fruitful results in recent years. And having a sea-based ballistic missile interception capability means that after the United States, China has a maritime interception ballistic missile combat system. This is all thanks to the vertical launch system developed by China's military industry.